What's up guys, welcome to Wasted Space, and today just got a quick multiplayer video for you for War for the Overworld. Uh, they've recently released the Enhance patch, which added quite a nice range of fixes for some of the textures and graphics and interface elements that weren't quite as good as they could have been. But it's also reintroduced the multiplayer test that they had running not that long ago. Now, this is in a relatively early state. Uh, this is the second attempt they've had at releasing and testing it, uh, and this time round they have fixed a lot of the connection issues that were present the first time. Uh, basically, without the right port forwarding set up, you weren't able to host a game or see anybody else's games. In this version, that's all been fixed, and you can now get in, actually find and host a game, and get to play a little bit of War for the Overworld multiplayer. So, the idea of this vid is basically to bring you a first impressions of what that's like at the moment, what sort of state it's in, and combined with the enhanced patch, how exactly this has improved War for the Overworld in the last month since my previous video. So kicking off with the UI enhancements, and there's a big one to mention that has probably been obvious to anybody who's seen any War for the Overworld up until this point, is that you can now see the blocks that you're selecting, which is wonderful. Uh, that alone has massively changed how much I'm enjoying the game, ridiculous as that seems. But on top of that, and announced last week, they've started working with a company called Player Research. And basically what these guys will be doing for them, alongside generally taking feedback from the community and trying to implement it better than it is being at the moment, is they are working on a new UI and we have a sort of example design up on screen at the moment to give you an idea of what that might look like. It's still sort of spiritually the same as what we've got currently but with a lot more polish regarding how things are laid out and it just looks a lot more intuitive. Now this isn't due until the next big update which they say is towards the end of this month but I'm really excited to see what's going to be contained in that because the UI really feels like one of the main things holding the game back. And that isn't to say that I'm not confident that it's going to be a good game. I'm starting to get more and more confident that this is going to be a very good successor or spiritual successor to Dungeon Keeper. What I'm saying is that the UI was one of the elements that was currently holding back your enjoyment of the game as it stands. It felt like you were fighting the UI a lot of the time. So I'm really hopeful that once we get this new UI development in and some of the associated UI components that are going to go with it, so a manner of seeing what creatures you have in your dungeon, for example, uh, would be really cool. Although, admittedly, you can do this by pressing F4 and it will bring up a debug window on the right-hand side, but, you know, a proper implementation of, and a minimap, put those things together and it's going to make the whole game feel like a much more solid experience. When it comes to the multiplayer side of things at the moment, it's nice to see that it all functions and it's stable. I've played a couple of games and we managed to get the whole way through the game. Connect no problem, play no problem. The only thing is when you get near the end of the game and there's a lot on the map, the FPS does drop quite significantly. So you'll probably notice in my recording it gets a little bit jerky. But aside from that, the multiplayer experience is kind of fun. Obviously you're missing those UI elements that I've already talked about that mean you don't have as much control as you'd like and everything's I don't know, a little, little bit clunky organising groups and trying to get your creatures to go where you want them to. But beyond that, it's showing some real potential. Although it's worth taking into account, multiplayer was never one of Dungeon Keeper's strong points. Uh, there's something about how you were playing against another Keeper, combined with its notoriously bad um, net setup, that meant that it wasn't that much of the same experience as when you were being attacked by heroes and do-gooders. So it, it's always worth keeping in mind that they will have to exceed what Dungeon Keeper did in order to make the multiplayer experience really solid and really fun. But for the time being, it's got some promise. And some of what they're doing with how the spells operate, like the um, ability to turn rock into permafrost or the ability to break permafrost and make it mineable, is, an, is a mechanic that was never there in Dungeon Keeper, and I think it actually seems really cool how that could affect map design to sort of change how the game played out in multiplayer. It would be much less about the Keeper's minions just fighting another Keeper's minions, and potentially more of the Keeper himself trying to interfere with the progress of the other Keeper by freezing areas of his dungeon, or by very, very quickly mining out areas of his dungeon when it wasn't expected. So it, it's going to be interesting to see how that all plays out. Right now, they're just a sort of first glimpse at how the resource management in the game will work. When you start off in multiplayer, you don't have any veins, and you've got to slowly research those. I actually make a mistake in this video that means that, in reality, uh, my brother who I was playing should have beaten me. But I didn't go for an archive immediately. 
And what that meant was that my research was very, very slow. When I went up in prophecy on his base, he is way ahead of me at the beginning of the game. And it's only because of a small mistake he makes attacking through a bunch of defences that he ends up losing his forces. But it gave that glimpse of how mana and the veins are going to be important to your multiplayer progression. And if you combine that with the gold mechanic, which isn't properly implemented yet, this entire game I didn't have to worry in the slightest about how much gold I had. But once those two things are in together, it's feeling like it's going to be quite hectic. You're going to have a very, very tense edge at the start of multiplayer games where resources are slim and where you put those resources matters in a way that it, I don't think it ever did in Dungeon Keeper. So it's nice to see that War for the Overworld is actually introducing new mechanics instead of trying to simply recreate what Dungeon Keeper was. There's also, of course, been quite a bit of content added in the shape of uh, new creatures, new rooms, and a couple of new mechanics. I don't want to go too far into those, other than we have potions and rituals announced as incoming also in the next patch. And those sound like completely new mechanics, stuff that wasn't present in Dungeon Keeper, and is going to be in War of the Overworld, and kind of change a little bit how the game goes. Overall, last month's sort of progress and development has been really impressive in my mind. They've taken some big steps forward. There's no big warning signs on the horizon that make me think, well, actually, that could have some potential pitfalls to it. Uh, you know, how far are you going to follow down that line? There's a lot of good mechanics that seem to come in. There's very little that could potentially mess up the game model. And yes, that's coming from the mindset of someone who really enjoyed Dungeon Keeper and obviously wants something that pays good tribute and homage to it. But I'm quite convinced so far that Subterranean are actually going to pull off that rather difficult trick of making something that's both a tribute and homage to the original and also a game in its own right. So thanks a lot for watching guys, there'll be plenty more War of the Overworld updates on the way as we progress and I will see you next time.